Hi everyone, I'm Joel from DAT Bootcamp and I'm joined today with Charles. Charles is the first year class president at the Columbia College of Dental Medicine. Um, he's a first year dental student and we're going to talk today a little bit about his experience leading up to and beginning in dental school. So Charles, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name, like Joel said, my name is Long. I, um, I grew up in Atlanta originally. I graduated um, from high school in 2008. And then I uh, went to West Point for four years. And then after West Point, I spent um, some time in the Army and then finally ended up here in dental school. Um, I'm married. Uh, my wife is actually an incoming first year at Columbia next year. Cool. Um, yeah, so looking forward to that. You mentioned that you were an undergrad and then actually took five years within the military before entering dental school. What was it like studying for the DAT and how did you prepare being that many years removed from your undergrad? Yeah, so the, uh, the, the methodology that I, um, that I went into it with, the strategy that I had was to um, first relearn the, the basics of what I learned in undergrad as much as I could, you know. I get, I originally planned for like, I think a month and a half to do that. Um, and I had, uh, me and my wife took the exact same courses. I didn't have any of my old books. She actually had all of her notes from almost a de decade ago at the time. So, um, you know, we went back through that, used, uh, online, like YouTube videos and, and whatnot to just, uh, basically go through a semester uh, or two semesters of organic and general chemistry and um, really just relearn the concepts. And what I, and then I wanted to use um, bootcamp and other resources as um, kind of like a litmus test, but what I didn't realize was that it was also a teaching resource. So um, once I, uh, once I, I felt like I learned the, the, the coursework, which um, took me, ended up taking me three months I started um, using bootcamp and other tests that I, I guess I could call litmus tests, tests that would give me a, um, an understanding of where I was at and then try to learn from what I missed. So, yeah. I mean, studying for the DAT, to answer your question, was really, really difficult um, because I had to relearn a lot of stuff. But, you know, I think maybe 10 years ago before the advancement of the internet, I don't know how I, <laughs> you may not be sitting here, but. Um, it really, uh, you know, using bootcamp taught me everything I needed to know, really gave me that baseline, especially with the videos that he added. During my time, it was like halfway through my studying. Um, and so in terms of actually uh, like your DATA prep, um, because you're more of a non-traditional student, how much time did you spend preparing from start until when you actually took your test? Uh, yeah, so originally I planned on, on doing three months but what, what ended up happening was it took me three months to like learn the baseline of organic chemistry and general chemistry and some other things. So it ended up taking me six months total. Uh -huh. um, the first three months, though, were really me trying to learn, um, like I said, the basics of the course, the courses. And then I would say three months of studying the DAT specifics. Okay. And then once you finish your DAT, um, I'm not sure what month it was, how close it was to applications. But can you tell me a, bit, a little bit about your applying to schools, how many schools you applied to, how you decided which schools to apply to? Yeah. So I, um, so to an answer your first question, um, I, my time, because my timeline shifted to the right, because I ended up taking more time than I, I wanted to take it in June or July of 2016, but instead I had to take it in August of 2016. And I, I felt like that was kind of late, but um, the nice thing I, I found out with the missions was once I got my unofficial score report, I just sent that and said the official ones away. Um, and most of them, you know, just responded okay. Um, and then as soon as they got the official score report, uh, you know, I started getting interviews around the time that I felt like everyone else started getting interviews. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like taking in August put me at any disadvantage because, um, you know, I, I had set, all my interviews were pre-December. So that was what was important for me. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then how did you decide which schools you ended up wanting to apply to? 
Yeah, so I part of my uh, path to wanting to do dentistry was um, I was very interested in oral surgery specifically and uh, the concept of dentistry being a part of the being treated as a, a or the mouth oral cavity being treated as a part of the whole body uh, as opposed to just a, a separate um, thing that you know you treat preoperatively. So I, I looked at schools that kind of taught that way, specifically schools that integrated the medical curriculum in, uh, into the den, dental school, uh, especially during the didactic years. And um, that, that brought it down to um, really six schools that I wanted to go to. Um, I applied, I applied to four and yeah, so I applied to four, I interviewed at all four and yeah. Cool. Um, so in terms of costs, just to give a kind of rough estimate, I'm not sure if you kept track, but how much did you end up spending between um, applications, flying to schools for interviews, actually doing the interviews, secondary applications, stuff like that? Yeah. Um, so I actually, because I was in the army, um, I, I had a unique situation where I was actually leaving. Um, I was, I was going to Korea. So I had to, um, tell admissions when I applied that, you know, if I, if you don't give me an interview before this date, I'm going to have to come back from Korea. And, you know, it's very uncomfortable for me <laughs> to do that. Uh, Cause I'm, at the same time, I know they're reviewing my application, but, um, a lot of schools are very accommodating. Yeah, so I did I did a four city tour. So I flew from um, from o Oklahoma City to uh, New York City to Columbia to Cleveland to Case Western to Louisville um, for the University of Louisville, and then actually back to Oklahoma um, um, for the University of Oklahoma, uh, which is where uh, my wife was stationed at the time. Cool. And then between all the schools that you interviewed in, how do you decide where you wanted to go? I mean, it might have been that you, uh, Columbia was your top pick, but why? Yeah. So it kind of goes back off what, you know, I said what I was looking for when I um, applied to dental schools. But um, when, once I started interviewing, I kind of realized there's so many more dimensions to a dental school. And it's really hard to do as a pre dent because you don't, it's really hard to, you know, get a grasp of what dental school is like. Um, but once I started going to school, especially in that short time period, I saw a drastic difference in how the schools operated and how the students interacted with faculty, with each other. Um, and the schools I interviewed are drastically different schools. So the thing I loved about Columbia was the student body really seemed to have a very, um, a very solid um, sense of community, uh, where mm -hmm. you know the way that the great way the grading system is and the way that the teaching is, is uh, taught. You're taught here to like uh, each other out and make sure that the person to your to your right and left um, succeeds. So I liked how that that was kind of uh, you know the, the main thing that they emphasized here, and it, it proved to be true. And I couldn't be happier with my decision. So. What is the grading system at Columbia? So it, it's pass fail. They actually changed that our year. They didn't. We didn't even know that. They didn't announce it until we got here. But they, um, it was pass fail honors, and then they switched it to pass fail um, starting this year. And how do you think that's uh, improved your experience as a student? I think it, I think it's drastically improved it because um, it, it there's like a divide in some other classes where there's people that are trying to honor everything. People who are, you know, maybe trying to hide, they're trying to honor it. And it's just this extra dimension that in reality, I think everyone's trying the best they can, but there's just, you know, this, like I said, another dimension um, to like studying and, you know, and making it just pass fail. It, it makes everyone on the same playing field. Everyone's trying to achieve the same thing and no one is concerned about anyone, anything but helping uh, each other, you know? Yeah. When I was in dental school, the dental school I went to was just graded. And yeah, it's a lot worse because everyone's, oh, yeah, yeah. Out. everyone's focused on just doing the best they can on the test instead of actually learning the material. So yeah, if you have the opportunity to go to a pass-fail school, I agree, it's a, a big advantage. Um, so you're almost, this is April, um, you're almost completed your first year of dental school. How do you think your first year of school compared to what your expectations were as a pre-dental student applying? 
Yeah. Um, so I, I was really, really, really worried about it. Um, because like I said, the DAT, I knew that I could, I knew it's a standardized test. I had done well on standardized tests in the past. I could study for it and, you know, and do well up to the right time. And, but you know, going to actual professional school is different. So I was worried that I was going to get caught up because I, you know, was not fresh out of undergrad. Um, but in, re in reality, the same concepts apply to dental school that apply, I think, everywhere else, whether it's a DAT or, you know, a job, like uh, hard work, showing up on time, being dedicated, uh, that, those things help, help, will help you succeed here. Um, and so, like, reality versus expectation, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a big, scary beast. It, uh, you just, you just got to show up and, um, and, and do what you need to do to learn and be enthusiastic about it. Um, although tiring, I'm sure you know, you, you can get through it. Okay, so now we're gonna go into some rapid fire questions that aren't necessarily related to dental school. The first one, what's the biggest failure you've ever had? Um, biggest failure I, I've ever had was probably, um, it's actually related to dental school because like I said, I was worried about um, you know, doing the biomedical curriculum here is post DAT and I was in Korea. So I decided to take an online microbiology course to like, uh, I don't know, I got a bright idea and it ended up being the worst idea of, uh, of, of my academic career um, because I just uh, underestimated the job, um, the needs of the job and whatnot. So I ended up uh, getting to a decision where I had to decide just to take a C in the class um, or drop it. Um, either way, it didn't matter because I was already accepted to dental school, um, but I still had to submit the transcript. Um, you know, so it just it looked really weird. I mean, I know that that is not like a life changing situation, but uh, I wanted to just say that because it was, I, I think that it speaks to, I didn't go, I went against the advice of what a lot of people had told me, was, which was, you already got into dental school. You don't need to do anything more. You know, relax as much as you, I could, um, and just take the time to you know enjoy the last time that you're not going to be thinking about, uh, you know, in size yeah. ledges or whatever. You're not. You, you just yeah. you just uh, can just be normal, I guess, so to speak. Um, and so I, you know, I went against that advice, and I, you know, I regretted it pretty hard. Um, in Canada, you can get in after three years, and it turned out I was a half credit away from getting just a bachelor's of science, a three-year bachelor of science. So I made the bright idea to take an extra credit. I took this anthropology course, ended up completely ruining my summer for a piece of paper that I literally have never used since, just so I could have a BSA. Right. So I agree, right. if you get into dental school, good advice, or when you get into dental school, is just to relax. Right. Next question, what's the best investment you've ever made of $100 or less? Yeah, so um, I, I kind of, you know, thinking about this, like I, I go back and forth, but I'm something I'm really sad with, although it's small and seems like a minute minutia. I, um, I, it's my desk lamp. So I actually bought a $60 desk lamp. Um, and the reason that I did it is because I, um, I, I went through three of these, uh, with the three Italtronics Amazon desk lamps. I bought them, showed up, they were great, broke, bought it, broke three times. And in my current room, you know, I live in a studio uh, housing and if you can't tell, there is no lighting on, on the ceilings here. So when the, um, when my lamp went out, I'm, I'm hosed. I might, my, my uh, the back of my, my screen's all I got. So I, I, uh, I was like, you know what, I'm buying this lamp and I know it's just a small thing, but it, uh, knowing that the lamp is not going to break on me, you know, I hope not. Um, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's a big deal studying to make sure you have what you need to do to study and you're not thinking about anything, but what you're, you're learning. Um, so with a hundred dollars or less at that, I can constraint, I have to say, say my, my thing. Yeah, I think that's a good one. It sounds like it probably has had good return on investment for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, next question. What do you do for fun or what do you do in your spare time that you enjoy? Yeah. So I like to. I like to do outdoors things. I like to get outside, um, uh, especially in dental school because you know, you're, lots of time you're sitting down studying. So if, I, if it's my time, I'm not doing that. I need to be standing up outside doing something. Um, and 
speaking back to you know, when I decided where to go to dental school, the uh, I you know Manhattan has so much to do here, so much to do outside, um, so many free things to do outside. Um, so yeah, pretty much anything outside, whether it's running, um, going to festivals, just uh, any act, any outdoor activity, I, I like to do. Yeah, I think that's super underappreciated advice by a lot of the pre-dental community where it just seems like you can always study more, but actually getting outside and just doing something fun is a great way to kind of reset and come back more focused. Right. Yeah. I, I, uh, um, yeah. So just to speak to that, um, I, I have had that mindset even in dental school, you know, I'll find myself like, no, like I need to sit here. But what I, what I've found to be hundred percent true is, I can get way more productive if I take the time to get outside and, um, and you know, just do something other yeah. than study. The time I'm spending studying is more productive. So. Um, the final question, what's the number one piece of advice, if you had to distill it down, that you'd give to other pre-dental students? Um, so I would say that, you know, keeping, your, keeping an open mind uh, going into dental school because, um, or, you know, even just applying, uh, because I think that a lot of people, myself included, have, um, uh, mi- a preconceived notions that are not, not correct or necessarily true. And it affects where you apply, uh, where you, where you see yourself. Um, but you really just think long-term, like 10 years from now, where you see yourself, what you see yourself doing, um, and then that's what you need to focus on, and then work and think about you know the mechanisms to get there. Uh, just thinking, thinking you know one week ahead of you, or, or maybe even just one year ahead of you if you're just taking the DAT. I think that's uh, that's a mistake. That's really great advice. Okay, thanks so much, Charles, for doing this with me. I really appreciate it.